Amen. How's Living Hope Church today, huh? How we doing? Woo! Man, it's great to see you. It's be great to be able to, to, to speak to you today. And, uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of things. I don't get to do this as much as, uh, as I used to. But uh, it's my favorite thing to do in all of life is to is to preach the word and uh, is in my favorite church. Okay, um, and I love you people. And I love what God's doing here, and and thank you for being here. And I'm just excited about today. Hey, wasn't the worship team great? Wasn't that just great? <clears throat> And you, uh, you don't want to cut out after the last song because we're going to do a reprise and uh, rock this place at the end of the service. So don't be leaving. Don't be leaving early. Hey, um, I want to just comment for a minute about last week, the generosity uh, of you as a church. Um, our youth group uh, was scheduled for camp this week. They're at camp right now. They're coming home today. And uh, at the last minute, because of the fires up in western uh, central Washington, their uh, camp was canceled. They called and said, you can't come. Uh, all the camps are canceled. And uh, Cam went into scramble, emergency mode, trying to find a camp. Ended up calling over 70 different camps in the Northwest. And uh, finally found an opening down in Central Oregon. And uh, they had a spot. And, uh, but the problem was camp was going to be $3,000 more than what she had planned for. And so at the end of the service last week, we took an offering, and you gave, you gave $5,000 for kids to go to camp. Now that is incredible. After a regular offering and a regular service to step up and give to, to camp and then to the Malawi mission. And uh, the thing is, when you give like that, you don't realize how it impacts people on a personal basis, on a personal level. And there were three students that could not go to camp. And the mother had no money for them. And uh, she talked to Cam and, and well, you know, you got to pay. And then because of this offering last week, we were able to scholarship those three students to go to camp. And uh, when Cam shared that with the mother, tears started coming down her eyes that her kids could go to camp. And that's because of you and your heart, your generous heart. So thank you, church, uh, for being that generous and for giving unto the Lord. So, hey, uh, we have a great motorcycle ministry, and I uh, love hanging out with these uh, men and women. Uh, yeah, yeah, right on. And yesterday we did a ride, and I, I don't get to do that much very often uh, either, And um, but yesterday I was able to join the motorcycle ministry for a ride, and we took a ride around Mount Hood, clear up around Mount Hood after a great men's breakfast, had a great time at men's breakfast, and then we jumped on our bikes and, and we drove. And this is a memorial ride for uh, Steve Orndorff. Some of you, if you've been around a while, you might remember him. And uh, uh, yeah, a great guy. And we stopped at different towns to pray for those cities. First one was Sandy and then some others along the way. And we prayed for them, prayed for the leadership, prayed for the people, for the businesses, and that God would bless those towns. And it was an awesome ride. It's just one of those days where the sun was shining. It's just beautiful. We're up around the mountain there and just cruising along and just a glorious day. Six hours of riding until the last hour. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm telling you what. Oh, you guys saw that monsoon that poured in yesterday. Okay, we were in the middle of that. Oh, geez, and we're trying to hurry to get back, you know, before the thing hit. Well, I was about Beacon Rock coming down Highway 14 when that thing hit. And I'm telling you what, it was an unbelievable storm. It was just blowing like crazy, lightning, and I'm trying to run my bike away from the lightning. And said, oh, Lord, don't hit me with lightning, man. I can't believe it. And the torrential downpour, I couldn't see. My glasses were just drenched. I'm soaked to my underwear. <laughs> I could not believe it. And I'm going, oh, Lord, what is going on here? And, he, and you know, I'm trying to look for that silver lining in everything. 
And there was not much of a silver lining except God said to me, I'm giving you a sermon illustration. So, oh, well, thank you, Lord. Can you give it a little bit in a different way? But I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about life, and that's how life is for us. You know, we're cruising along, and it's sunny, and things are going great, and it's just good days. And then the storms come. And, and something hits, and, and maybe it's a medical, uh, you know, report from the doctor, or financial, or a death in the family, someone we love dearly, or, or whatever it is, a relationship that goes south, and the storms of life come, and, and, and how do we respond to that? How do we respond to those storms? How do we respo- respond to the storms that, that we're in personally? And even our country, our country is in a storm right now, people. We're in a storm. There's a battle for this country. And we have, as believers, have to understand that we're in a battle. It's a spiritual battle way more than anything else. Last week I talked about a witness tree. A witness tree. How many of you know what a witness tree is? How many have even heard of that before? Okay, there's a couple of you right on. How many of you have been to Hoosong and Larry's? I'll make it easy on you. Okay. A lot of people have been to Hoosong and Larry's. Well, right down next to Hoosong and Larry's on the sidewalk that leads from the restaurant over to the bridge is a, is a pla- plaque there. It's like a little monument. And it tells about a witness tree. I didn't know about it till a couple of weeks ago. I was down there on uh, uh, the waterfront park there, and I saw that. A witness tree is a, is a large, stable, solid tree that becomes a stationary place that you begin to mark and survey off of. You begin to make markings, roads, and uh, sur- the surveys. And there's a tree, well, there was a tree down underneath I-5. It was a cottonwood, a large cottonwood. It's like 50 feet wide at the top and 75 feet tall. It's a huge, solid cottonwood tree that dates back to the early 1800s. Uh, the the, the American, uh, Native Americans used it uh, to establish uh, peace treaties and smoke their peace pipes and everything underneath that cottonwood tree. Early surveyors, Esther Shork and Amos, that were one of the first settlers here in Vancouver, established their land from that that witness tree. That witness tree became a witness of the land, the the survey. And, and, And if you read a little bit of history there, all of southwest Washington, all of Vancouver, All of the streets, all of the neighborhoods extended from that cottonwood tree in South Vancouver, right at the end of Main Street, the witness tree. And it wasn't until, it was about 18, no, 1911, June 29th, 1911, that the spring waters of the Columbia River overflowed and began to erode the root of that witness tree, of that cottonwood. And it took two years. It stood firm for two years. But on June 11th, that year, that cottonwood fell into the Columbia River and disappeared downstream. A tree that had stood for hundreds of years as a witness. And what a picture, what a picture of our America. America. A country that has stood firm for over 200 years. That has been the lighthouse of truth and righteousness and and caring around the world. And how our base as as a country is eroding. It's eroding. And when is it going to be that America falls into the river like the cottonwood tree? Like the witness tree? And maybe that's you personally. Man, you've been strong in the Lord. You've been following Jesus and you've been serving Jesus Christ. But then there's things that have come into your life and and now you're doubting, you're fearful. There's things that you've been struggling with and that solid foundation that you once had is being eroded and the enemy is attacking you and you're being pulled down. What do you do in the midst of that kind of storm in your life? 
If you have your Bibles, I want to turn to the answer in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. Paul's talking to the Corinthian church. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, if you're watching online, get your Bible out, get your app off, out in, on your phone there, and mark this verse. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Pray with me, church. Lord Jesus, as we, as we get into your word right now, I pray that it would penetrate our hearts, Lord, that it would touch our lives. And God, that each one of us would be changed, maybe just in a little way or maybe in a huge way. But your word would impact our lives. We would not just be hearers. We would not just come to church, great time, great songs, and then leave without being impacted by your word. And so, Lord, may your spirit just come now and speak to our hearts. Fill us with your spirit. Be present in this place right now and touch people's lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Paul loved the Corinthian church. Uh, here's a church that was, uh, it was, it was not a perfect church. It was a struggling church. There's a lot of challenges uh, in the Corinthian church. In the book of Corinthians is Paul talking a letter to the church about dealing with all of these things. There was fighting in the church, even to the point of taking each other to court, battling things out. There was immorality in the church, uh, relationships going on that shouldn't have been, people showing up at, at uh, communion drunk. Imagine that, taking the Lord's Supper and being drunk, and Paul addresses all of these, and he says, these are wrong. These are wrong things. These are sin before God, and God, the, you're going to experience destruction. You're going to experience these things in your life that will destroy your life. They bring and lead to death. And he says in the verse prior to 58, he says, the sting of death is sin. These things in your life bring death. They bring destruction. And the power of sin is the law. The law shows us where we're wrong. But thanks be to God, he says, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory over all of this through Jesus Christ. The death and res resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has broken the power of sin. He's broken those chains of sin. And now we can live free because of what Jesus Christ has done in our lives. You have the victory. I want you to turn to your neighbor and just point to him and say, you have the victory. Now say it back. You have the victory. We have the victory in Jesus Christ. Therefore, now, in this verse, in 58, therefore, he says, therefore. Why? Because we have the victory. Because of what Jesus Christ has done. We have victory. Therefore, stand firm. Dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Like that witness tree, be steadfast. The King James Version uses that term, be steadfast. And we're watching our country in an upheaval and, and the places that we used to turn to in the past, institutions and colleges and universities and leaders across our country and, 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 and great businesses and companies and even churches that used to stand for Jesus Christ, that used to stand for truth, that used to stand for righteousness and stand for life and stand for all of these things have crumbled. And they've gone by the wayside. The world is, and the enemy is flooded in. And, and now they're, they're like a, 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 a ship on a sea that's just tossed to and fro. And right seems wrong, and wrong seems right. And, 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 and instead of doing the right thing, they're doing the wrong thing. And our country's facing this upheaval. And maybe that, that's what's happening in your life. 
There's some, you know, people or, or situations or relationships or things in your life that you used to go to, you used to turn to, and all of a sudden they're not there anymore. Or they're in an upheaval. You say, what do I do? What do I do? How do I stand firm? Paul says, in the middle of all of this, be steadfast. In the Greek language, it's a metaphor. It's a picture of two incredibly important things in our lives. And that's what I want you to focus on. That's what I want you to understand. The root word here is a chair. That word steadfast comes from the Greek root word that means a seat or a chair that is settled or anchored, anchored to the floor. It's not tossed to and fro. It's not, you know, tipping over or anything like that. How many of you have ever been in an earthquake? I mean, a, a serious one. Man, quite a few. I was, I was in, the, <laughs> I was in the, the bad earthquake in Southern California back in the early 70s. Some of you might remember it, the Selmore earthquake. The dam was going to burst, and L.A. was going to be flooded, and we lost a wing of a hospital and freeways, and over 60 people were killed. It was a bad one. 6 a.m. in the morning, I was in bed, and, and it shook so bad. It was like a 7.3, I think, on the Richter scale. And it shook for a minute. My neighbor across the street told me later in the day, he said he was up getting ready for work and he was standing at the counter making a sandwich and it started shaking. And he turned around and his refrigerator was walking right towards him like this. (laughs) (laughs) The door opened up and all the food flew out on the counter there. It was bad. That's not a fun thing when the ground starts shaking. And that's the idea here. It's not fun in our life when the things that we're anchored to start shaking. Well, what you need to do is anchor your life to Jesus Christ. That's where the anchor is. See? Anchor your chair. Anchor your life to Jesus Christ. That's what that means. Um, All these influences, all these things in the world, they're all going to pass away. You, you can't, uh, you know, you're going to be influenced by things. In fact, it's amazing, um, even in real time now, how quickly media, social media, Facebook, how quickly the influence starts coming. I mean, you know, you can be sitting there and, and say, you know, man, I think the toilet's plugged. And next thing you know on Facebook, you're getting plumbers that are, you're, you know, reaching out to you. <laughs> I I typed in, uh, on my notes, I typed in the phrase, I would like to go to the beach. And and then I turned to my Bible app, and there's uh, airfare to Hawaii right there, pops up. (laughs) Airfare to Hawaii. I remember a while back, one of the late night talk show hosts um, on his show announced over over the TV, he said, hey Siri, order a pizza and have it delivered to the house. And across the country, thousands of phones ordered pizzas, <laughs> and the pizzas came to people's houses. In fact, some of your phones might be ordering a pizza right now. You know, you never know. You might check it. The influence is immediate. It just comes right away. Politics, all of these things. But listen, all of those things are going to pass away. All of those things are not going to last Where are you anchored? There's two things that Paul talks about. This word, uh, uh, abide or uh, be uh, stand firm. The first one is standing firm in your mind. Okay, the way that you think about life, the way that you think about things, the decisions that you make. Be settled, anchored in your mind. And how are we anchored in our mind? We're anchored to the word of God. This is the truth that we anchor our life in. It's not all the other things in life. There's a verse that the Bible talks about. It's in Isaiah 48. It says, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Now, we, could, we need to re- translate that verse and say it like this, okay? Just hang with me for a minute here. It's applicable to the times that we live in. The verse should say, the Republicans wither and the Democrats fade. 
but the word of our God stands forever. Amen? Now, I listen, I'm all for voting. I vote. I think it's our duty and our responsibility as a citizens of this great country to vote, to vote our heart, but don't take your cue from how to vote from Facebook or from TikTok. Take it from the Word of God. Have your ballot there and have the Bible open. And if it lines up with Scripture, then vote for that person. If they bow the knee to Jesus Christ, then vote for that person. But if they don't bow the knee to Jesus Christ and name him as their Lord and Savior, then don't vote for him, church. Don't put him in office because they'll destroy our country. It's men and women, politicians, leaders, business leaders that bow the knee to Jesus Christ. They're the ones that we want to follow because the rest of them are going straight to you know where. And it's really hot. Okay, there. Bow the knee to Jesus Christ. You could put anything in that verse. Politics will fade. Sports will fade. Education will fade. And praise God, Facebook and TikTok will fade. <laughs> okay? They're going to fade. But the word of God stands forever. The truth of God. Anchor your life, your thoughts your actions, your marriage, your relationships, your business, if you, you own or work for a business, anchor that business in the word of God, the truths of the word of God. This Bible speaks to everything in life. And there's some times that we have to study it to make application for some of the challenging areas of life. But the Bible speaks to every area. No stone is left unturned. Let your, your life be guided, anchored in the word of God. And ultimately, in John 1.1, 1, 1, we learn, well, what is the word? What is the word? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the word is, say it with me, Jesus. The word is Jesus. Jesus Christ is the one you need to anchor your life to. You need to open your heart to Jesus. I'm going to give you a chance to do that here in just a moment. If you've never anchored your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to be like that ship tossed to and fro. You need to anchor your life. Open your heart to Jesus Christ. You may be confused. You may be discouraged right now. You may be facing a storm in your life. Don't travel one more step without Jesus Christ in your life. Anchored. Standing firm in your mind and then standing firm in your purpose. That's the second thing that t Paul talks about using that, that metaphor, that picture. Anchored in your purpose. He says, dear brothers, and like Paul, man, that's my heart for Living Hope Church, for all of you. Dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Listen, being here today, you're not here by accident. There's a reason that you're here. And that reason is that God has a purpose for your life. You may have been invited by somebody. You may have saw the sign and, and you just, oh, there's a church. I'll roll in and see what it's all about. But you're not here by accident. God has a purpose and a reason for your life. You have gifts and talents. You have resources and God has you here for a reason. There's three significant events that I like to talk to people about. Three really important times in your life in relationship to Living Hope Church. Now, you know, you have significant events in your life, man, marriages and, and uh, kids graduating and, you know, paying off the house or paying off the car, um, whatever, but three significant events here at Living Hope Church. And the first one is the moment that you come to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the most important thing that can happen to you. More than anything else is for you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Man, I hope you do that. If you've never done that, that's what we're all about as a church. 
Because Jesus changes everything. I just recently had a conversation with, with a young man that, 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 that came to me, and we talked a lot, and, and he, he said, I just, I can't do it. I, I can't give my life to Jesus. And I said, Jesus will change your life. He's the most important and significant thing. And I said, you have a choice. You have a choice. You can either leave and walk out those doors, or you can say yes to Jesus Christ. But that's the most important thing in your life. And just like that young man, you have that same choice today. You can say no to Jesus and walk out, or you can say yes to Jesus and open your life to him, and he'll change your life. He'll change your life like nothing else will in your life. That's right. He will change your life. That's the first and most important thing. The second thing is the day that you follow Jesus in the waters of baptism. Man, that is a celebration event right there. When you say yes to Jesus, it's one thing to raise your hand and open your heart, but it's our next step to get in those waters of baptism and declare your faith publicly. And church, let me tell you, when people get baptized, we ought to be set going through the ceiling. We need to be rejoicing and praising God because that's a, such a huge step in people's life to identify with Jesus Christ. And maybe you're here and you've never been baptized. You've prayed, you've trusted Jesus Christ, but you've it's just the courage and the step to take that next step. You need to do it. I don't know when the next baptism service is. This is not a promotion for that <laughs> service. It's just that's a significant event in your life that you need to take that step if you haven't done it. The third one, and just as important, is the day, the moment that you realize why you're here at Living Hope Church, why you're here. And let me tell you, it's not to warm that chair, okay? Now, I'm glad you're here, and I love every one of you, and I'm so excited about what God is doing. But I want you to know there's a reason that you're here. There's a purpose. And that's what Paul is talking about when he says stand firm. Stand firm in your mind and stand firm in your purpose. Well, how can you stand firm in your purpose if you don't know what it is? And so get on a pursuit, people. Say yes to Jesus, and then the next words are, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to serve here? How do I get involved? And we have so many opportunities and ways that you can get involved. Nobody needs to be sitting here and doing nothing. And this is a day and age, people, where we need everybody involved. We're in a battle and we can't fight this alone. We need everybody that loves Jesus Christ to stand up, stand firm, and say, I'll go for it with you. I'll walk together with you, and I'll do something. I'll do something. Man, I'll, I'll lead a Bible study, or I'll work with children. I'll work with youth. I'll help Ernie here on the building and building this building. I'll run a camera. Last week, we had a young man step up to run the camera. I think, is he here today? I don't even know if he's here. There he is, right there. Give him a big hand, man. Right there. First Sunday on camera. He said, I want to do something. A young person. I want to do something for Jesus. And there he is on camera. Man, what a great thing. People say, Jesus, what do you want me to do? I want to get involved. I want to make my life count. Like the video that we saw. I want to make a difference for my life, for Jesus, for this church, and I want to make a difference for my country. I want to make a difference. Look what Paul says in that last part of that verse. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Always give yourselves to the cause of Christ. And when you think about it, when you step back and think about it, what else matters? What else makes a difference? What movie can you think of that, wow, that changed my life? What sports event? You may have been to the Super Bowl or the playoffs, the NBA playoffs, and your life is so impacted, it changed your life. Man, there's nothing that changes our life like Jesus Christ does and gives us purpose and a reason 
the reason for life. You know, the world focused two weeks ago on the greatest event in all of the world, the Olympics. And for most of us, it's gone, except the Paralympics. You want to watch those. But it's gone. It's in the past. And we don't even think about it anymore. And there's a moment when an athlete will stand up and go, oh, look at the gold. Oh, yeah, it really tastes good. They always taste it. They'll put it in their mouth. But then it's gone. And we're on to life. The only thing that really matters is Jesus Christ and what we're doing for Jesus Christ. What's holding you back? Church, don't hold back. Maybe you're fearful. Maybe you're doubtful. Maybe you're struggling and saying, well, I don't know enough. We'll teach you. We have some awesome Bible studies and, and places where you can learn and grow. Don't hold back. But it starts with that first step of saying yes to Jesus and then saying, Jesus, what do you want me to do? Would you bow your heads with me, please? Right now in this moment, my worship band will gather behind me as we pray. I'm going to pray a simple prayer. And it's that first step. It's a saying yes to Jesus and opening your life to him. Or maybe you've just been struggling and there's just some things going on in your life that that you've just been floundering and, and you just you need to come back and say, Lord, man, I have not been standing firm in my life. And I want to do that. I want to do that in my life right now. Would you just pray with me? These words, trusting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is between you and God. He sees your heart. He knows your heart. But you just think about these words. And then if they mean something in your heart and in your life, you pray them with me. Just pray, dear Jesus, I believe that you died on a cross for me. Just pray that with me. I believe that you died on a cross for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. Thank you for what you've done for me. I trust you right now as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of my sin, my failures, the times that I walked away from you or turn my back on you. Please forgive me. Come into my life and change me. Make me a new person in Jesus Christ. I surrender my life to you. Just say that. Mean it from your heart. I surrender my life to you right now. And from this day forward, I will follow you. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that with me, just lift up your hand wherever you're at. I want to just pray for you. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's just praise him for what he's done right here. Let's just praise him. Thank you. Amen. Lord, I pray for those that raise their hands right now and just trusted you as their Lord and Savior. I pray for those that, that are just reestablishing that, that walk with you to stand firm, to be steadfast in the Lord Jesus Christ, not wavering to and fro but trusting you and following you. That's what we want to be as a church. That's what we want to be as your people. We want to follow you. We want our lives to make a difference. I pray for those that are just going through a rough storm right now, God, that you just touch their life and lift them up. Be encouraged by Jesus Christ right now in your heart and in your life. We're going to go into a time of worship right now and just this altar is open. If you want to come pray, I'll be here at the front. Others will be here at the front to pray with you. 
whatever that challenge is, whatever God's speaking to your heart, let's go to him right now. And let's stand firm in Jesus Christ. Lord, bless those right now. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and draw them to the cross of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray.